We are back with our garden guy, Charlie Stalker. And Charlie, we have a bunch of questions, so we'll begin with Rich. Yes, Something's right. eating the bottom of his oak tree. How does he stop it? See, that, that's, so, that's what we call nebulous. You know, the skies at night, hazy, nebulous? Yes. That's a nebulous question for me in that <laughs> there are 101 ways I can answer that problem. Have him go to either my website, Hey Garden Guy, Charlie Stalker, or my Facebook page, Hey Garden Guy, Charlie Stalker, and I need more information. And with more information, I can pretty well direct you as to how you can solve that problem. All right, Rich, that's what you need to do. So Carla yeah. called, and she has mold and moss growing on her plants. How does she treat that? Okay, it's, it's lichen. It's, it's really not moss. It's what we, uh, it's, uh, what we call a symbiotic relationship. Now, it's a shame Ron isn't here today because we could teach him a new word. <laughs> but symbiotic, symbiotic relationship is one where both of them participate uh, in a successful arrangement. It's a good relationship. And lichen is somewhat like that. It could be maybe described as mutualism, but I'm going to call it symbiotic relationship. There's no, no damage to the plant by virtue of that lichen being on there. Uh, if you want to rub it off, you can so do it, but it's all part of the environment. It, all, it adds to the completeness of our environment, so I wouldn't do a thing if I understand that it is lichen. She said a green moss, 99% of the time, that's lichen, won't hurt a thing. All right, well, Phyllis wants to know how to prepare her Rose of Sharon for winter. Don't have to do anything once you get the second killing frost. If they so choose, they can trim that Rose of Sharon down to maybe 40% of what it was. And if they have, uh, if it's an older Rose of Sharon, they can kind of reinvigorate that plant by trimming the oldest, maybe two or three of the oldest branches and allow the new ones to come up from the ground. Uh, and, and that in and of itself, if they so choose to do that, will invigorate the Rose of Sharon. But actually, you don't have to do anything to the Rose of Sharon, just enjoy it. Well, my daughter called and she wants to know, she wants to plant uh, boxwoods in front of her house. Is mm -hmm. fall the time to do it and how far apart do you plant them? Yeah, it depends on the type of boxwood. There are 15 different varieties of box boxwoods. The ones I go with is the green velvet, only because it stays so small. Buxus, I don't know what, it's Buxus, I know that, but I don't know what the rest of it is. Anyway, green velvet boxwoods, and you want to plant them at about four foot centers, and if they're in containers or if they're bald and burlapped, the soil temperatures, hear me out, the soil temperatures are starting to come down. And as they come down, that is a perfect environment for planting shrubbery, for planting plants, et cetera, et cetera. So we're getting into that time now where you can really get a lot of good root growth for next year. So I would say now is a good time to do it for the next three months and green velvet boxwood at four foot centers. That sounds good, Charlie. What kind of mulch do you, mulch do you recommend for your flower beds? Wood, wood fibrous mulch chipped up and I wouldn't use, I would be very leery of any type of mulch that you think may have come from crates uh, or the pallets because oh, right. a lot of times they'll have arsenic in them. And that arsenic is not good for the plant. So uh, if you can find out where the genesis or where that really came from, um, you'll be doing yourself a favor. Uh, actually, you're, you're better off going to a, oh, a place like Colonial uh, or, or even uh, my son-in-law Stalker's Landscaping uh, and get mulch that has been ground up from the bark and you know is fresh and you know is not from pallets. Thank you, Charlie Stalker. 